Hello and welcome to EBA Day 2020. I'm Hannah Wallace and kindly calling into our virtual studio now to talk about why banks need resilient, agile core banking architecture is Travis Clark Walker, Chief Marketing Officer for Thought Machine. So welcome Travis, thank you very much for calling in. Thank you Hannah, it's a pleasure to be with you. So this is a really interesting topic, especially because of the year we've just had. We've been covering a lot of stories about the impact of COVID-19 on the industry. But could you start off by maybe highlighting how it has impacted banking digital transformation strategies in particular? Let's start there. Certainly. I think, you know, nobody can be in any doubt. It's been a very challenging year in many regards. But I think if you look at it through, you know, financial institutions and the technology that they have to hand at the moment, um, you know, it really has been uh, quite a challenge, quite a crisis in many regards in terms of the inflexibility that some of the technology has um, they've had at their disposal. Uh, they've been bottlenecked in things like their customer experiences and their product teams. Their ability to provide flexibility at a point of crisis you know, has been challenged and consumers have expected more from them when the technology hasn't necessarily played ball with that. Mm -hmm. And now that's not to say that they haven't coped. You know, I think financial institutions have done an amazing job around the world to continue to provide the services, uh, to upgrade the services they've had. But it has been a challenge to do so. And it's been more of a challenge to do so than it should otherwise have been, I think is probably the, the key aspect of that. Um, and we know that banks are now looking at it through the lens of, well, actually, what, what should we now be renewing? How we should be building more agility into our systems? So although they coped in the main incredibly well, uh, they would recognise, I think, uh, that the technology has, has let them down in terms of the flexibility that they should have been able to achieve. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, OK, so from that, could you maybe guide us through the ways in which resilient, agile core banking technology can maybe benefit the end customer? Yeah, I guess initially let's look at it through what's actually causing problems. You know, the technology is outdated in that it's inflexible at product manufacturing, it's inflexible in terms of real time data, uh, the systems can't, in many regards, be updated in real time, they certainly can't be updated in live instances. Um, uh, and that's meant that where things have had to change, and we've seen things like, you know, mortgage holidays or credit card. Um, you know, holidays or, or you know, re reduction or removal of interest charges, those types of services, um, they've had to be done quite often manually in the background of the systems by somebody actually going in. And of course, that requires that the customer has managed to talk to the bank. So they've had to get through contact centres because they haven't been able to do those things in the apps or through the online services. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is a, is a broken set of um, uh, experiences. If you're having to actually call into a bank and then somebody in the bank is having to do something manually in the background, you know, we can only consider those to be broken experiences. You know, modern cloud native next generation technologies allow those things to all be automated. The product can be updated at a core system level to allow for things like holidays. The front end services can be updated to allow the customer to apply for those things in real time by the, you know, the flick of a slider uh, and the automated decisioning systems, because they're connected to real time data, can then automatically apply decisioning. So it's not that the customers didn't get access to the types of things they needed. It's the experience of getting it was massively um, constrained by the architecture that exists within the banks today combination of both the software architecture and to some extent the infrastructure architecture as well. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, you certainly painted the picture for us there. All right, so my next question is sort of looking towards the future, the crystal ball question as it were, uh, and coming from your position as Chief Marketing Officer, uh, what's your outlook for the future of banking going forward then, especially into 2021? So I think if we, we're looking at it through two versions of that. One is the you know the existing traditional banks and then the challenger banks. Um, you know, existing traditional banks, you know, they've got extremely large customer bases, they have huge pools of data sets at their disposal. Uh, their customers, you know, in the main are loyal to them. Um, and they are extremely well placed to bring the next generation of banking services to their customers. Uh, they just need 
flexible, next generation, agile, cloud native technology to do that, which will in, enable them to embrace new products, new experiences, new offerings. Um, uh, and you know they are being nipped at by the challenger banks. Uh, many of them around the world are now starting to look at this through building their own digital banking you know, challenger or service. Uh, and we fundamentally think that's probably the right strategy for the traditional banks, which is you know build a new within and then expand that out to your customer set, expand that out to your traditional business lines. Um, equally, of course, you know the challenger banks. It's now easier to build a full service bank. There's more tooling available. There's more um, access to infrastructure. You know, if you're building it in a cloud native context, of course, you can put it onto you know any of the mainstream cloud cloud vendors. Uh, and therefore, the speed at which you know banks can be deployed, uh, the range of products and services that can be contained within them. If you use products like Thought Machines Vault, is is quite wide. I mean, we have a full range of retail banking product, be that credit card, mortgage, deposit product, current account. Uh, and it's quite unusual to find all of those products contained within a single set of uh, a single core banking system and um, have every opportunity to to um, you know, embrace a next generation of agile technologies. And we think challenger banks, the speed and their agility and their focus on customer experiences will serve them extremely well as well. All right, that's interesting. And of course, Thought Machine has recently closed Series B funding, appointed former CEO of HSBC as chair, ramped up hiring and announced Monies and Curve as its new client. So um, you've certainly been busy. So can you tell me a bit more about this growth and are you seeing a greater demand for next generation core banking technology, uh, but also a bit about maybe why? Well, thank you for uh, the observations. It's certainly been a very busy year for us, absolutely. Um, in terms of the why, um, I think our view is that cloud adoption and next generation core banking technologies is now a real top priority across banks all around the world. Um, in terms of the why, uh, you know, customer demand or expectations is ever increasing, not driven necessarily by the financial services industry, but driven by their um, their services received from other you know other other industries. So whether or not that's you know a Netflix or a Spotify or an Uber, the quality of experiences that are coming out of these businesses is significantly higher than you know the previous generations of, of those industries. And, and that, in many regards, is a result of those businesses being built on built on cloud native technologies. Mm -hmm. Their flexibility, their speed, their scalability are all dramatically different. Um, and that's why we, you know, we're seeing a very significant demand for our product. And as you say, you've referenced a few of our most recent uh, client signings. Um, but it's not just about you know the innovation that you can give to the consumer. It's also about what it does to the internal business model of the bank. You know, it lowers the cost base of the bank uh, in dramatically. Uh, it speeds up their ability to put new products into into play. It reduces down their internal friction. Uh, it means that they can be doing things whilst the systems are up, which allows you to be doing you know live changes mm -hmm. uh, without there being downtime in the background. Uh, and although customers don't really experience downtime, you know, the apps are always present. The underlying systems are quite often had to be taken offline to be updated, be that for regulatory um, obligations or for, uh, you know, for, for new product creation. So, you know, there is a real drive now from the industry to adopt this new technology. Sure. Well, Travis, thank you so much for sharing your insights. Uh, a lot of things to look forward to as well, I think, it's safe to say. Uh, but we'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much for calling in, and I hope you enjoy the rest of EBA Day 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.